let's have a talk about something. I, I want you to know that what I'm about to say, you're going to react to it one of two ways, most likely, and it's going to be dependent on your age. And please don't take that in any way as an insult to older or younger people. You'll know what I mean in just a moment. So I grew up, I was born in 1981. So I grew up in the 80s and 90s. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're young, this won't really make sense to you. Maybe you won't even believe me. If you're old, if you're my age or older, you will know what I'm saying is true. You see all the race angst that's out there today. It's everywhere now. Can't escape it. DEI this, black versus white that. Every talking head on the news talking about how horrible white people are. Kids getting taught this. Black lives matter. Now every professional athlete is a race activist talking about how oppressed black people are endless race snipping here, race there. And then of course, that's, that's brought about the rise of it on the right as well. They think, uh, you know, white people are in a race war. You've the, all this race sniping, race division, race stuff that's out there now. You know, it wasn't that way when I grew up. <laughs> Don't I sound like a grandpa? It, it just wasn't. And let me clarify something. I need to put a big fat disclaimer on this. There was race tension because there is always race tension. This is not unique to America or our period of time. The history of the world is tensions between cultures, races, religions. There was always race tension. So it has always existed. But when I grew up, and this is not ancient history, I'm 43 years old, for most of my life, for about half of my life, it just wasn't something we thought about. Or talked about. I mean, we had eyes. We could see that person's white, that person's black, but it just, it didn't exist. And then came a man named Barack Hussein Obama. He, maybe you think he's black or half black, but that's, that's not what Barack Obama really is because you see, that's just skin color. It's really not important. It's just the pigmentation of your skin. Barack Obama is not black. Barack Obama is red. Barack Obama is a communist. He's not black, white, left, middle. Barack Obama is a bona fide America-hating communist. His mentor in life was a man named Frank Marshall Davis. Look up Mr. Frank Marshall Davis. You know communists actually had membership cards with numbers on them? Frank Marshall Davis, he was a card-carrying member. He was a communist. He mentored Barack Obama. He taught him about how evil America really was. And he taught him how to be a revolutionary, how to divide, how to rip a nation apart, because that was, of course, what Frank Marshall Davis wanted. And as he mentored and raised this young man, that's how he taught Barack Obama. And then Barack Obama and his family went and sat in a church. Reverend Wright, Reverend Jeremiah Wright was the pastor of that church. And for years, decades, Barack Obama and his witch wife sat in that church and they heard all about the U.S. of KKKA. That's his pastor's direct quote. They heard all about how bad this country sucks and it's evil and it's wrong and it's this and it's that. And I didn't know any of these things were happening because no one knew who Barack Obama was at the time. Just either a no-namer or maybe he was a state senator. None of us knew that this America-hating communist was rising and rising and rising. So while we were watching, living in an era where racial harmony, I'm not gonna say harmony is probably too strong a word, but as close as you can probably get to racial harmony, that's really where we were in the 80s, 90s, 2000s. We were luxuriating in this world and we had no idea this destroyer was rising. And then Barack Obama got into power and Barack Obama did as he had been trained to do. Barack Obama began to divide. Barack Obama began to pit one citizen against another. Barack Obama, well, he was the freaking worst. And the reason I'm bringing up Barack Obama is because Barack Obama, he was 
He was the dividing line. He was the why in the road where America, we were on the right path and then Obama came and now here we are of black versus white. There's white people, fear, 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 fear. Oh, this endless race angst and activism. Barack Obama was the one. You want to know why so many Americans despise each other now? Why there's so much race division? Barack Obama was that why, and that man had the gall to get up yesterday and say this. I, I don't understand how we got so toxic and just so divided and so bitter, and I, I, I get why sometimes people just don't want to pay attention to it. I don't know how we got so divisive, so toxic, so bitter. There was nothing that happened in this country during Obama's eight-year presidency that he did not pounce on and take advantage of as an opportunity to divide, as an opportunity to move the communist revolution forward. You know, again, this is it's a dividing line. If you're, if you're young right now, maybe you're rolling your eyes. Maybe you think I'm overstating it. Maybe it's, oh, Jesse, you're crazy. We didn't have real race harmony in this country. Older folks watching it with your kids, tell them. Tell them what it was like. Not, a, not in ancient history, not back in my day, in the 90s. We would, we would tune in at night on Friday nights. My cousins would come over, and parents would eventually, when it was dark, they'd make us come inside, and we'd turn on, uh, I believe it was ABC, and we would watch two shows every single Friday night. It was the Friday night lineup on ABC. First one was Full House. It was this white family, and they were trying to figure out right from wrong and raising these girls, and that was, that was the show, and it was a funny show. And the show right after it was Family Matters, and it was a black family. And there was, it just wasn't a thing. It never came up. We weren't watching white shows or black shows. We weren't filling quotas. It was just great television. And if you're young, you've never lived in that world, and I'm sorry, it's not your fault. You've never lived in that world, but you should know we had it. Like, 15 minutes ago, and then that piece of crap took power and started to divide this country. You, you, maybe, again, this will be an age gap. Maybe you think politicians and reporters politicizing mass shootings, maybe you think that's just kind of how it's always been. Well, I'm here to tell you something else. There were mass shootings before. We've had mass shootings in this country. There's always going to be some psycho who wants to kill a bunch of people. I never, for the first half of my life, I don't remember, I'm sure it happened here or there, I don't remember a single time that something horrible, tragic, like a mass shooting happened and a politician of any stripe, Democrat, Republican, politicized it. If Most of the time they never spoke at all because it was deemed as inappropriate. But if they did speak, you know, if the president got up and did speak, he would give a speech about how... This is a time, let's pray for our fellow Americans. It's a very sad day. Let's come together. It was always something along those lines. But that's, that's not Barack Hussein Obama, you see. He was fighting a revolution, is fighting a revolution. And he recognized that a mass shooting, well, it's a tool for the revolution. If you're wondering why every time there's a mass shooting, Every reporter and Democrat politician will stand on the bodies of dead people immediately and try to grab your guns. How did that happen? Where did all this begin? Well, allow me to introduce, introduce you once again to Barack Obama. This is not about politics. This is about these families and families all across the country. We're saying let's make it a little harder for our kids to get gunned down. The fact that, that, that 26 year olds were gunned down in the most violent fashion possible, and this town couldn't do anything about it, was stunning to me. And, and so the, the question then becomes what can we do about it? The, the only thing that's going to change is, is public opinion. If public opinion does not demand change in Congress, it will not change. Each time we see one of these mass shootings, our thoughts and prayers are not enough. You know, earlier this year I answered a question in an interview. My response here 
at this podium ends up being routine. Right now, I can imagine the press release is being cranked out. Somebody somewhere will comment and say, Obama politicized this issue. I would ask news organizations, because I won't put these facts forward, I'd ask the American people to think about how they can get our government to change these laws. Couldn't help himself. You don't realize it if you're young. If you're too young, and again, I'm not insulting you, you can't control when you were born. If you're too young, you really don't understand how close this country was not long ago. Where we are now was in so much that guy's corner. That is the guy who did it to us. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I am right. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is, and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.